Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining uh, my presentation for uh, Cloud Native Security Con. And this presentation is going to be about the state of vulnerability in, in Cloud Native uh, security or in Cloud Native applications. My name is Magno Logan, and I work for uh, Trend Micro as a security researcher. So just a little bit about myself. Um, as I said, I'm a senior threat researcher at Trend Micro, also an information security specialist, um, currently doing cloud and container security research, uh, mostly working with Kubernetes security and also open source security. Um, I'm a member of the CNCF security tag team as well since uh, October last year. And I've been doing container and security, uh, container and Kubernetes security research, as I said. Um, I also have a personal blog that's called katanasec.com, where I used to post my uh, articles at least once a month. Um, and there are also all my contact information there and all my previous presentations, either like slides or videos from previous talks since, since 2011, since I started speaking at tech conferences. Okay, so uh, before we start, I, I just want to uh, give you a quick overview of what we're going to cover in this talk. Uh, basically, uh, this is a project that I've been working on for uh, a couple months now, and um, still ongoing. There, I think there are some uh, improvements uh, required, and, and we're going to talk about that at the end. But the, the I'm going to explain to you the idea for the project, uh, what are the CNCF security audits, how they're done, and, and, and the list of, of the ones that have been performed so far on, on many different projects. And then we'll go into the details of the results of the data that we collected and analyzed. Um, basically, I'm going to explain the methodology that we use, the analysis that we've done, and the results that we got. And also uh, talking a little bit about the third party risks of some of this, uh, these projects. And uh, to uh, conclude and summarize everything, I'm going to give some recommendations, uh, some recommendations to the CNCF, but also some recommendations for organizations and end users and some next steps on, on how I'm planning to uh, keep improving this project and doing uh, as, a, as a kind of a periodic research. Um, before I start, I just wanna say that, uh, give a little disclaimer here. The idea for this project is to generate awareness on the need for more cloud native security and open source security. The idea for this project is not to generate FUD, as we call in information security, which means fear, uncertainty, and doubt around cloud native projects, right? So we, we just want to raise the awareness and show uh, that security is important for this project, especially uh, uh, some of them have been uh, used for many different organizations and we rely on them uh, to uh, run our systems. So it's important to focus on security as well. A shameless plug here before we start with the content. I have created this uh, GitHub project, which I call the almost awesome Kubernetes security list. Um, it has a lot of content there around Kubernetes and Kubernetes security. It has um, videos, books, and articles, and everything you need to know, I think, to, um, to learn more about Kubernetes and Kubernetes security, at least to get started. Um, so I think there's there's a lot of contributors there already. People from the CNCF ha have participated and submitted uh, new links and, and new information. So this has been going for uh, almost a year now, and, and it's it's really incredible to to have contributed to the community in that way. So feel free to uh, start this project and and fork it and submit new PRs if you want. I, I'm always uh, available and, and, and looking for new content to add there. Okay, so how 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 this project started, how the idea of this project started, right? Um, I think uh, in the beginning of this year, I was uh, helping the CNCF 
uh, security tag team to update the list of uh, security audits that was done on on different CNCF projects, and and so I saw that like pretty much all of those security audits were PDF reports, and it, some of them were kind of hidden inside of the repositories of those projects, right? So it, it was kind of hard to find and, and, and you had to dig through them. And, and especially since they were on PDF, there was no place that we could check the status of those vulnerabilities if, if there were any CVE reported uh, because of, of that uh, vulnerability that was detected, right? So those security audits are usually um, organized or directed by the CNCF and, and they hire third-party consulting firms to test the security of different CNCF projects, right? As we can see here from the slides, uh, there are many different projects that have gone through security audits, right? Uh, Kubernetes, Helm, gRPC, etcd are some examples. And, and you can see as well the audit vendors or their consulting firms that have tested these projects. So basically, the first thing that I did was, okay, um, I need to concentrate all these reports in a single location. So that's easy to find and, and I can uh, consult them and query them in an in a easier way than, than just go, going through each project there. So what I did was I created a repository on my GitHub called CNCF Security Audits. And each uh, inside it folder that has the project name, there is the PDF with the with the report and the security results of each security audit, right? Okay, that's that's good, but how, how do we go through each PDF report and, and kind of uh, analyze all those vulnerabilities, right? So as I said, the security audits are independent, done by third-party consulting companies. They're usually required for projects that move to sandbox to incubating. And they started in 2018, at least that's the, the, the first ones that we have uh, uh, details from. And they're usually one time only with some exceptions, right? And unless the project is um, very well known and, and very well used by the community such as Kubernetes, it usually goes through another uh, security audit such as the one that Kubernetes is probably going through right now or, or, or it it's, has a, RFP open at the time that I'm recording this video. Yeah, so as I said, the, the result is a PDF report with the findings, right? And in, in security, that's fine. Uh, that's, that's usually the artifact that you're expecting from a pen testing report, a, a PDF with all the findings. But for, um, I think for developers and, and DevOps organizations, uh, we are way past that, right? We need a, a way to, a easy way to list out those vulnerabilities and 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 also check their status and see if the, the problem is, is it was fixed or not and and who's addressing that, right? So, um, so like. Uh, as a suggestion here, uh, I'll, I'll probably give more recommendations at the end, but as a suggestion here, maybe uh, having those uh, finalized reports added as GitHub issues or, or something like that would make it easier for uh, everyone and would give more visibility into those security audits. Okay, so, so how did I do, uh, how did I start at this? this kind of this project here. The methodology that I used was download all those PDFs. As I said, I created this GitHub uh, repository to help me with that and, and, and it's available for everyone. Um, I parsed all the PDF reports and I collected all the relevant data that I needed. Um, I basically aggregated everything into a single location. Uh, of course, I used a, a Excel file for that because it was easier to uh, see and, and compare the issues and aggregate results. Basically, in the beginning, I analyzed the data from all those reports and understanding the results and did some uh, measurements on, okay, what is what, what, which project has the most vulnerabilities, what are the most critical vulnerabilities and, and all that stuff. But then I decided, okay, maybe I could do more and I also assessed the third-party risk 
of those uh, projects, analyzing their libraries and dependencies with uh, 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 open source security tool called SNCC. Uh, one thing to note here is that there were some projects, some security audits that were done that were specifically about fuzzing. And, and so there, the, the, the vulnerabilities reported were very specific to fuzzing and buffer overflows and stuff like that. So for this, uh, this version of the project, I decided to, to left out those vulnerabilities. Otherwise, it would kind of, uh, I think, would mess the, the data and the comparison there because not all projects have had uh, fuzzing testing. Okay, the analysis, I'm going to show some graphics here in a second, right? Basically comparing the project numbers, uh, the project with the number of vulnerabilities, the vulnerability categories and types uh, as, as reported by the consulty uh, uh, firms, and also comparing vulnerabilities and severity so that we can see uh, which uh, the number of, of vulnerabilities that we have as low, medium, high, and critical, right? And then I'll go into the, um, the open source security or the third party dependency, and as we uh, like to call software composition analysis, right? Okay. So moving on. Um, this, uh, this presentation uh, has some of the main results and graphics. Uh, at the time of, of the, the recording of this, we're working on finalizing the final, the PDF report that we're probably going to publish together with this talk when, when it's published when it's uh, uh, released during, during the Cloud Native Security Con. So you're probably gonna receive a link for the, the full details for the, the complete PDF report with my uh, with all the details that I that I found and that I wrote about it. Okay. So the first thing that we analyzed here was which project had more vulnerabilities reported to it, right? And it comes as no surprise that Kubernetes came out on, on kind of the top with the most vulnerabilities reported to it. It is the largest of those projects uh, and the most adopted of them. And of, of course, it has more lines of code, right? So, and thus more chances of vulnerabilities being found, right? There are some studies that uh, have uh, reported, some researchers mentioning that there is at least one vulnerability per a thousand lines of code in, in any kind of, of software, right? So this, of course, this is an average, but at least we know that the more lives of code, the more chances you have of finding vulnerabilities. So that's a given. Um, in, in second place, a, a, there is etcd, which is also part of Kubernetes by default, and, and Helm, which is the package manager for Kubernetes projects as well in third place. So that's, that's quite interesting, but you can see, uh, uh, really see the difference between Kubernetes and etcd here uh, in second place and, and the other projects as well. So um, that's something that we need to be aware of. Uh, most of these vulnerabilities were fixed or their risk were accepted. So uh, of course, make sure that you're using uh, the latest version available to you for your Kubernetes projects. Um, here is just a, a drill down of those numbers, right? Uh, how many vulnerabilities were found by each of them. As we can see, Kubernetes has uh, uh, more than double from the second place from at CD and, and so on. I just showed a, a few of them here. Okay, so before I go into the next, next graphic, uh, we need to talk about the uh, classes of vulnerabilities. So uh, one of the vendors, I think was um, Trail of Pits, they, in their reports, they classify the vulnerabilities according to these classes. And we have access control, auditing and login, authentication and all that stuff. And they, uh, they give you a description of each, uh, what each class means, right? Um, some of them, uh, some of the other consulting firms didn't adopt this, this kind of approach. 
And so we, we found it interesting and we used this kind of classification to the other vulnerabilities as well. According to the description of the vulnerabilities, we assign a specific class or category to that vulnerability so that we could uh, uh, compound all the data and, and create some, some uh, evaluations there. So basically, the, the vulnerability class or category that has the most number of vulnerabilities is uh, data validation, right? And um, as we can see here, it's, it's way over the second place as well, which is configuration. And, and data validation relates to either input validation or, or, or lack of verification and uh, of data. It could, could cause also like things like buffer overflows and heap overflows and all that stuff. So um, it's, it's really interesting to find that uh, a lot of these projects have data validation issues, right? Which is something that can be easily uh, solved by adding proper validation in your code and, and doing uh, proper uh, exceptions and, and try catches and, and all that stuff, right? Okay. The next one here um, is the severity, right? So the vulnerabilities per severity, we found that uh, that some of them, Actually, most of the, the reports, the, the projects only had like low and medium vulnerabilities, which is good, right? Which uh, uh, I think it's reassuring for us using those projects that they don't have like few, only very few of them had some critical vulnerabilities down there at the bottom. Um, I think it's, it's interesting to, uh, to note here that despite the, the great uh, quality of the consulting firms that have uh, tested these projects, even though they're, they're kind of well-known in their field, they couldn't find a lot of critical or high vulnerabilities in, in all these projects, right? So that's, that's interesting and something to note, right? So, so I think that's, that's important to, to highlight here. Okay. There is more uh, reports and analysis that I've done. I, I couldn't show everything here in a 25, 30 minute talk. So in, in the interest of time, please take a look at the, the, the report for more, more details and more uh, analysis. So the last thing that we did was the open source security and, and dependencies here, right? When, when talking about cloud native security, we need to be aware that most of these projects rely on libraries and dependencies that are also open source software, right? And these libraries are usually incorporated during the development lifecycle and rarely get updated or checked against known vulnerabilities. So in this uh, section here, we analyze the dependencies of these projects and look for outdated um, and or vulnerable libraries and licensing risks that they might be using in their code. For this analysis, we use the uh, Tremicro Cloud One open source security, which is powered by SNIC. Um, and as we can see here from the results of all, I only tested the projects that had security audits done uh, for them, right? So I didn't test all the CNCF projects so that we can make some comparisons here. So again, uh, Kubernetes shows on pretty much on top. If you look at the numbers there, is the project with the most vulnerabilities uh, in, in its dependencies. Uh, besides just Notary that's on top here uh, because it has a critical vulnerability as well, right? And so that comes as no surprise as we found on the, on the previous analysis of the security audits as well. Um, and And... In the, in the second and, and kind of third place there on the number of vulnerabilities, the total number of vulnerabilities of their dependencies, we have Harbor and uh, Vitas. So it's interesting to note that although these projects have access to uh, some open source tools, and I think they use uh, on the CNCF, they, are, they have kind of their own scans for vulnerabilities using Sneak as well. There's, uh, there's a lot of, of issues here. Um, 
I, I, I don't mean to say that all those vulnerabilities are valid and exploitable, but there is some analysis that needs to be done and to see probably there are some issues here that need to be addressed and fixed. And, and some of them could be just updating the library to the latest version. And, and so some of this should be uh, prioritized and, and fixed. Um, here we can see the vulnerability risk is increasing over time uh, regarding the libraries and dependencies, right? As we can see, as, as time goes by and, and new vulnerabilities are found and, and, and the uh, libraries get uh, outdated, uh, so more issues are, are raised and, and the kind of the, the risk increases for these projects, right? So the quickly we address those issues, the faster uh, we can have it fixed and, and reduce the risks of these projects being compromised. So to summarize everything, I think I uh, for this for this project in this report, uh, we came up with some recommendations for the CNCF and especially the security tag team. Uh, which I'm also part of, and so I'm going to recommend that to them as well. But uh, first thing I think would be to improve this overall quality and, and security of those projects is establishing more periodical assessments, um, at least uh, once a year or something like that, if that's available, and if, of course, if there is budget for that. Um, implement a CNCF buggy bounty program. So when doing this analysis, I found out that only one project from the CNCF has a public bug bounty program, which is Kubernetes. Besides that, all the others, they only have like a, a, what we call a VDP or a vulnerability disclosure policy. And so maybe that would increase the number of reports and vulnerabilities that get reported to these projects. Um, other thing that I noticed um, when we're trying to do the RFPs for the new Kubernetes security audit is that we had a hard time uh, finding uh, consulting companies and vendors to uh, that were interested in doing that. So maybe promoting that those RFPs even more and, and have that available and, and kind of publicizing it for different organizations and maybe in different countries would get more uh, RFPs for, for those audits. Another thing is that um, it's it's hard to um, to see if this those issues reported on those audits, if they have been fixed or if they have any kind of CV assigned to it, right? And, and so you would have to go through the code and analyze all the commits and everything and find these issues if there is something related to the vulnerabilities that were fixed. So making it easier and more visible to see these reports and status of each vulnerability, I think that's something that would be interesting that, that we can improve upon. Um, another thing is prioritize issues related to critical third-party components, right? Uh, we saw there is at least one project that has a critical vulnerability there on, on the dependencies, and there is also a bunch of projects with, with high vulnerabilities as well. So maybe trying to prioritize that and, and, and talk to the project maintainers to see if they could fix those issues, of course, without causing any problems on the, on the projects and the applications itself, because we know that sometimes updating uh, libraries can be tricky and might break your application. So uh, we need to be careful there as well. Okay, so this, as I said, this project is the, I think would be, uh, I can call it the first edition and I'm planning to uh, do a second edition next year. Um, but the goals uh, and next steps here, I would say that I can provide the data back to the community and share that with this, the CNCF security tag team. Uh, basically all the data that I, I aggregated from the different security audits. As I said, I'll try to run this uh, once every year and compare the results with the previous version as well. Um, also adding some static analysis and reviews for all the projects, right? Analyzing the, the, the code of those projects for security vulnerabilities as well. And check and see if there are any issues here that were unreported or unfixed and report those to the proper projects and, and hopefully get them fixed. So I think that concludes my presentation. I hope you enjoyed this uh, talk and I'll be available for questions 
uh, either on the Q&A section or on Slack. Thank you.